Hello learners, hope you are keeping well. Uh, today's lesson is climate and weather, with specific reference to subtropical anticyclones and resultant weather over South Africa. Okay, now let's get going. Let's look at our exam guideline. We're going to look at the subtropical anticyclones also known as high pressure cells. Remember, a high pressure cell is an anticyclone, a low pressure cell is a cyclone. And we're gonna focus on the three that affects us, all right? In Southern Africa, South Atlantic high pressure system, South Indian high pressure system, and the Kalahari continental high pressure system. We're gonna look at the characteristics, the influence on the weather, all right? So we're gonna look at characteristics and the influence on the weather, South Africa's weather, which is very important. They play such an important part in determining our weather conditions for summer and winter. You would have covered some of this already as you did climate and weather. So it'll be a revision for you in terms of uh, looking at these weather conditions. All right. So uh, we're going to interpret uh, synoptic weather maps with these uh, high pressure systems. We're going to look at traveling disturbances, the mo moisture front and line thunderstorm, coastal low and berg wind. We're going to look at these weathers and the impact associated. All right, these weather conditions. Okay, we're going to identify them on synoptic maps and satellite photographs, which you could have done already, but now with specific reference to these traveling disturbances. And of course, we're going to interpret Synoptic maps looking at different seasons. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get going. All right. Now, let's look at these. As again, I say I'm going to use the word anticyclone, high pressure system to get you used to the fact that both are the same. Okay, so let's look at these subtropical anticyclones over <clears throat> Southern Africa. All right, or South Africa. First, we have the South Atlantic high pressure system. Already you can predict when you see the cold Benguela current, it's on the west coast, west of Namibia. All right. <clears throat> and you know already there's a colder ocean here. So it will be stronger eh? because there's more subsiding here. All right. Then we look here in the interior, we have the Kalahari high pressure cell. It's not as strong. It doesn't have those oceans to land. All right. And then we have the South Indian high pressure. Again, you'll notice the warm Mozambique current, the warm Indian Ocean, right, compared to the Atlantic. Okay, so this won't be as strong as that because it's warmer, or right, it'll be less subsiding here. So already by looking at the source, uh, you can make out many things, eh? So let's start looking at the different anticyclones slash high pressure systems. All right, it's situation of the South Atlantic uh, it's situated along the Namibian coast, the west coast. It's the strongest of the three anticyclones. The strongest because you have more subsiding air here. It's colder, so it's well developed. High pressure systems, as you picked up, associated with this in your grade 11, etc. All right. Uh, descending air heats up and lies over the cold air above the cold ocean, creating a permanent inversion. What we're saying here is that there's a lot of subsiding air. Let me create an ocean here. Okay, there's your ocean and it's cold air here. All right, this subsiding air is heating up adiabatically. It's becoming warmer. So we have the warmer air above the colder air. And that's why we say, because it's colder in this region, there's lots of subsiding air. There's inversion, warmer air below, above colder air. Okay. <clears throat> it brings drier conditions over the west coast of South Africa. Drier because of the subsiding air and not much rising air, which cools, condenses, forms precipitation, etc. So it's dry, a very limited rainfall over this side. All right. Then we have the South Indian anticyclone, this one here. It's situated over the east of South Africa. 
It blows over a warm ocean. All right, when it blows to, especially in summer, when it moves from this high to a low pressure here, yeah, it brings in warm, moist air. All right, so warm, moist air. And the cooler land could cause precipitation. Because as this warm, moist air comes over the cooler land compared to the ocean, <coughs> there will be condensation, all right? Cloud formation, rainfall, that means precipitation. All right, all forms, hail, whatever. Okay, then we have lastly the Kalahari anticyclone. It's situated over the central plateau. All right, it's the least developed cell because it's over land, not the oceans. Okay, stronger wind, it's stronger in winter because even winter, it's colder. So there's more subsiding air over the land. All right, and it's weaker in summer. Okay, and as I said, because it's hotter, there's less subsiding, there's more rising air, so it's weaker in summer. So it plays two different roles, strong winter, weaker summer, all right? And this is due to the greater amount of subsidence in winter and less in summer. All right, let's go on. Let's look at its impact now. We've picked up already, okay? And this is actually related to this okay and that is related to that diagram now we've already learned earlier on in climate and weather that during summer the itcz is in the northern hemisphere okay because it's summer there and it's uh i do apologize so what happens is uh, this is your winter condition and not your summer condition. I apologize for that. I think it's my gray hair down here. So in the winter in the southern hemisphere, the ITCZ is in the northern hemisphere because there's summer there. All right. And the high pressure systems flow and follow this ITCZ. You understand it's sending its air there from high pressure to low pressure. So they are in the northerly position. Look what's coming through the cold fronts of those middle latitude cyclones. And they then will bring in frontal rainfall over the Western Cape, colder conditions over the Western Cape. And if they move over the interior, decreasing the temperature. All right. So already you see the weather conditions being affected by the movement of these high pressure cells okay and then obviously the opposite in uh summer and this is a summer pattern now because it's summer in the southern hemisphere the itcz or rather the itcz is more in the southern hemisphere now we don't have this massive movement northward of the high pressure cells they now more southward can you see there more southward compared to these ones. So now when they're more southward, they're ridging, all right? They ridge down here and they block the cold fronts from entering. Can you see it down here? They're ridging and block the cold fronts from entering. Now, Western Cape won't get the frontal rainfall, okay? It will be warmer uh, and the cold fronts won't affect the interior. They will be warmer. You understand? And already you see this weather patterns occurring. All right. Then we look at the influence of one of these high pressure cells, the Kalahari high pressure cell, on weather patterns over the plateau. Now let's look at this. Let's get this into perspective. All right. This is an inversion layer. You know an inversion layer, temperature is higher above than below. So when air subsides, it heats up. When air rises, it cools, okay? So when we reach a point when the air rising is cooler than the air subsiding, that means the air above is warmer than the air below, we get an inversion layer, all right? Now, Let's look at this. This is a winter condition, all right? A winter condition. Now, let us look at this. In winter, 
there is it's colder there's more subsiding here can you see a large amount of subsiding here all right and there's less rising moisture so what happens this pushes the inversion layer below the upper level of the escarpment so now the inversion layer is sitting here this moist air cannot go in all right therefore less moisture coming over the plateau uh, less rainfall uh, less cloud cover temperature range will be higher because it's dry sunshine's very hot sunsets very cold so temperature range will be will be higher uh, lower humidity all these things will happen okay so let's look at it in winter subsiding air from the kalahari high pressure system all right is heats up the cell okay at the dry adiabatic lapse rate so it's coming down at the dry adiabatic lapse rate all right now it's warmer than the air above uh, below uh, 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 rather okay than the air from the coastal areas okay so it's warmer than that okay and that is where your inversion layer occurs all right your inversion layer occurs in those areas so the inversion layer now is below the level of the escarpment so the temperature inversion sinks below the escarpment and prevents moist air from entering the central plateau okay entering the central plateau there's not much moisture coming in all right so what happens then there's no or very little rain occurs over the interior in winter less humidity okay cloud cover because there's not much humidity all right larger temperature range okay larger temperature range that occurs there all right so winter conditions are different and sometimes you have these seasonal droughts in places like Gauteng etc where there is not no rainfall or very little rainfall that that happens okay so let's look at the summer conditions now and when we look at of course it's summer here we we'll notice there's a difference now the, the uh, land is hot in summer and the Kalahari high pressure system lifts due to continental heating okay so now because it lifts look at where's the inversion layer now right it's higher up because there's uh, it's hot there's rising more rising air less subsiding air can you see that there so the inversion layer is above the upper level of the escarpment all right so there's less subsiding air and the inversion layer is above the level of the escarpment now what happens the moist air can come in can you see it bringing the moisture <coughs> rainfall will occur all right so it allows the moist tropical air masses to bring in humid air over the interior and this causes summer rain over the interior more humidity coming in cloud cover and there's a smaller temperature range because the air is humid it can absorb heat so the temperature range will be smaller okay again you can see how the kalahari high plays its role by moving that inversion layer due to subsiding air when it's great it brings it below and when it's less the inversion layer is above the level of the escarpment all right now let's look at another thing that is caused by these high pressure systems and they are known as line thunderstorms okay now look at this i've got a little description here i'm going to go into more detail here uh, the resource will had it on it so we have the south atlantic high and we have the south indian high pressure system that's going to play a big part in the forming of these line thunderstorms all right but we also need to know a moisture front a moisture front develops 
with the cold, dry air from the southwest coming in from here, from the South Atlantic High. Can you see the cold, dry air <coughs> moving in? Comes into the country. All right, from the South Atlantic anticyclone. And it meets with the warm, moist air coming from the northeast, the South Indian anticyclone. So there's it coming in here. Can you see the moist air coming in from here? All right. Now, the moisture front is a dry line separating these two high pressure systems. So there's your moisture front in there. Can you see? It's a dry line that's separating these two. Now what happens? This is cold, heavy, dense air. This is warm, lighter air. It's more energetic. So the cold air from the southwest lifts the warm air from the northeast. It's coming, remember it's anti-clockwise circulation. So it's coming northeast from here and it's coming southwest from here. Of course, it's going to lift this air because there's it coming in, you understand? It's colder air. And what happens to the warmer air? It gets lifted from the east air. Can you see it gets lifted? All right. And as this air gets lifted at this point, it cools, condenses, forms cumulonimbus clouds. And you know, because of this cold air here, there's a rapid upliftment of the warm air from the southeast, from the South Indian high pressure system. Rapid upliftment. And if there's rapid upliftment, there is clouds of vertical extent. You understand? Cumulonimbus clouds. And now what is it happens? Because of this massive amount of clouds, we have thunderstorms. So in this case, we have line thunderstorms that develop on the east of the moisture front. So it happens here. Can you see those little thunderstorm signals and rainfall there? It happens along this. But it happens on the east because that's where the air is uplifted. On this side is this cold, dense air coming in and lifting the air on the east. So in a line thunderstorm, you will find that the rainfall happens on the east of the moisture front, but it happens in a line along that front or boundary. Okay, that is your line thunderstorms. We need to know that it happens in summer, okay? when the low pressure systems dominate the land. Because it's not gonna have rapid movement of air if there was a high pressure here. It has to be a lower pressure where this air moves towards it. Okay, so again, can you see the South Atlantic high, South Indian high, what an influence it has over weather. All right, next one we're gonna look at is a coastal low. It's also a moving disturbance, all right. It develops during summer and winter in South Africa. It develops on the West Coast. You understand, and then moves along the coast towards the East, all right? Now, obviously air circulates in a clockwise direction because it's a coastal low. It's occurring on the coast, but it's a low pressure system, okay? So it must flow clockwise in the southern hemisphere. All right, around the cell in the southern hemisphere. There is, these low pressure cells cause completely different weather on either side of the pressure cell. What do I mean by that? All right, if you look at it, it's going clockwise here. It's moving onto the land. So it's an onshore current. And if you take it this side and it starts moving there, okay, my yellow, I'll maybe get some red there quickly. All right, if I draw it this side, it's moving like that, you understand? And it's causing air to move from land to sea. It's an offshore current. So onshore current, offshore current. 
Can you see it? Bringing in moisture, etc. Coming from the land, it is dry. Yeah. So on this side, compared to that side, there will be different weather conditions. Can you see it? Because onshore bringing moisture, offshore more drier. So on one side, let me get my yellow marker. On one side, the precious of the precious cell, the air will move from land to sea. Can you see this side? And will cause warmer, drier conditions. Offshore winds. Can you see it? Offshore winds. It's coming from the land towards down. It heats up adiabatically and it makes it warm and dry. On the other side of the pressure cell, where the air moves from sea to land, this side, moist, cloudy conditions will develop because there'll be moisture coming in, condensation on the cooler land, you understand, uh, forming cloud cover, rainfall, and can lead to rain along the coastline. It's more along the east coast that we have this rain. You know why already? Because of the warm currents and the warm Indian Ocean, right? And this is known as your onshore. It's coming onto the shore. Okay, it's one of the pressure cells that's responsible for bug winds. So it plays a big part in the bug winds. I'm going to explain that now to you. All right, that's your coastal low. Remember, it moves along the coast from the west coast, moves along the coast to the east coast. All right. Now, the berg winds, a local wind, you don't get berg winds anywhere else in the world. You get them here. All right. It occurs in winter. All right. Uh, what happens here is that. When we look at this, there must be a well-developed Kalahari high pressure cell because that happens in winter, one of those things. So there's your Kalahari high pressure cell, right? And there must be a coastal low pressure cell present. There's your coastal low pressure cell, all right? There's it there. So those are the two conditions that are necessary. It must, it'll be in winter when it's well developed, the Kalahari high pressure cell, and then you have your coastal low. Okay, now what happens? This air will flow towards the low pressure cell. You understand? Down here. Okay, the coastal low along the coast. So uh, it must be the boat must be present. So the high, Kalahari high pressure cell, air will flow towards the coastal low, okay, pressure cell. And what then happens is, as the air flows from the Kalahari pressure cell to the low pressure cell or the coastal low pressure cell, air subsides from the plateau down the escarpment. Can you see what's happening here? There's the plateau, there's it moving. You understand? And it's going down towards that coastal low the dot represents it there. It's moving down. So obviously when it's moving down, it heats up at the dry adiabatic temperature lapse rate. Okay? At one degree Celsius for every hundred meters. Okay? Every hundred meters. Right. Now, as it's moving, must know that escarpment is large and quite steep. It heats up and heats up, all right? So it becomes drier and hotter as it's moving, okay? Why also dry? Because as it heats up and it goes down, the moisture evaporates from the air that is heated. As it's going down, it's heating up. So more evaporation, more moisture, so it becomes a dry wind. All right, very dry wind. Okay, this is an offshore wind because it's coming from land to sea. Okay, so it's dry and hot. Actually, it's very uncomfortable. You understand conditions, hot, dry conditions. Okay, very, very uncomfortable. Right, so this could cause also felt fires. Now, remember, 
it's a hot, dry wind. The fat fire can come through naturally through lightning or whatever that had happened, which is limited during this time. But people throwing stuff out, lit cigarettes or whatever, and then this dry wind blows and spreads the fire. Okay. Now, something happens, just a point of interest, guys. It's, on many occasions, this coastal low is attached to a cold front or there's a cold front coming in. And when the cold front comes in, it actually drops the temperature. Okay, it drops the temperature, sometimes which is generally replaced quickly by cold conditions associated with the cold front. But the wind itself is a hot, dry wind. Sometimes in, in, uh, in Durban, temperatures were over 40 degrees Celsius during winter. There were rare occasions. Imagine that. So temperatures rise a lot due to this hot. It's actually uh, not a good wind. I said human comfort conditions, fat fires, you understand, would spread damaged things. Okay. So it's associated a lot with that. And imagine this, and this is where I want to bring it in here. So this brings in dryness, fat fires, damage to anything, agriculture, uh, infrastructure if it's burns. And this one, on the other hand, if you look at this one now, is the opposite. You understand? Remember, you can get tested on these things. Light thunderstorms on the other hand, bring massive floods. Okay. Lots of rainfall, which can damage again agriculture on the other end. Now, one is dry and hot. One is massive flooding. You understand? Which can damage the area. Sometimes it may fill up dams. Okay, and it may bring in water supply, but most time it's a heavy rainfall. Luckily, it's not for a very long period of time. Okay, it's a shorter period of time that this may happen. All right. Let's go on. Let's look at this. What do you think this is? This is a satellite photograph. All right, but if you look here, can you see this area? This is your line thunderstorms. All right, occurring in this area along that moisture front. So the moisture front may be around here. And this is the east where this line thunderstorms are occurring. You can see the cloud cover. It's massive, all right, uh, causing massive rainfall over a period of time. Okay, lucky, as I say, it doesn't last for days and whatever. Okay, right. Uh, I'm looking at these little sketches. All right, we can see our cyclone, uh, our mid latitude coming in, and it's coming in because uh, the high pressure systems are in the northerly position. Again, the influence you can see it's May, it's moving north, and the high pressure systems are moving uh, northwards, all right, towards the ITCZ in the northern hemisphere. All right, look at the cloud conditions again. It's so nice to see uh, how clearly our synoptic map shows overcast conditions when the cold fronts are coming in due to the movement again of the high pressure systems. Look at this. There's another clear one here which shows you how the high pressure systems, the South Indian, South Atlantic, all right, have moved northerly, and there's this big cold front coming in, bringing in uh, cold conditions, frontal rainfall as it lifts the warmer air over the Western Cape. You understand? Beautifully shown down here. All right, so let's do a little summary on this general winter conditions. We know the anticyclones are in their northerly position and allow cold fronts to affect the country. We have frontal rainfall over the Western Cape. Temperatures are lower wherever it hits. You understand? When it's not hitting, you may find it's not that low. When it goes over any part of the country, it actually brings cooler or cold conditions. It's associated with dry conditions, clear skies over the interior. And also associated with bug wind conditions. All right, you know that because with the coastal, uh, with the cold front coming in, at there, there is a low pressure. So as this moves and when the low pressures 
and on the coast, it's a coast low. You understand? It doesn't have to be on the coast, just around the coast. And if there's a high pressure system around, then it's actually going to create, and of course your Kalahari high pressure system will be well developed and it will create berg wind conditions. Okay. Summer conditions, you can see this is December. All right, look at them now. They are in the southerly position. Southerly position. Can you see the ridging? All right, it's blocking them off. The cold fronts are passing by. They're not hitting the land anymore. They're passing by. Okay, so it blocks because of the southerly position of these high pressure systems. It's so clearly visible on synoptic maps. Learn your synoptic maps, learners. It's very, very important, hey? And it, you, because you can apply it on a synoptic map. It shows you the reality of it. I love doing this, okay, where you see it in action. Okay, then general summer conditions, anticyclones are in their southerly position and they generally prevent cold fronts from affecting the country. Remember I said generally in most cases, there are cases when it comes through when there's less ridging. All right, higher temperatures and humidity. Okay, because now we find that this cold air is not there, it's associated with higher temperatures and more humidity. Also related to the inversion layer, all right, over the allowing moisture to go across most parts of the country. Cloud cover, rainfall over the interior. Unfortunately for Western Cape, due to they deal with frontal rainfalls, we don't have much rainfall or no rainfall in the Western Cape. Line thunderstorms is also associated here in summer conditions, eh? Line thunderstorms. All right. Now, learners, we have covered this. I thought I want to bring one more thing in, okay, that learners have requested for me to do. And this is the uh, weather conditions. I mean, you have been doing it, but with pleasure, I will just do it. It's not related to this section. It's on interpretation in the last section. You understand? But I'm going to bring it in to show you. Now, learners, it's very important because this is marks for nothing, all right? If you look at, you need to know your symbols. Your teachers will give you this. What does each thing represent? Rain, drizzle, showers, snow, hail, all those different things. This is your cloud cover, all right? The symbols for cloud cover. All right, this means clear sky. A line means one out of eight. It's an octus, that means eight. Okay, one out of eight. Okay, my eight looks terrible. Two out of eight, three out of eight, four out of eight, five, write it like that. Cloud cover, four out of eight, five out of eight, six out of eight. And of course, when it's like this, sky is obstructed from view. You understand? Can't clearly see things. Okay, and then we also have wind speeds and direction. That's five knots when the line is like that. That is 10 knots, 15, a large and a small line, 20 knots and so on. We very rarely get these conditions, eh? Where the little triangle represents a 50 knot. And then of course you can get a line again, 55 knot. You understand knots? These are wind barbs that give that. They also give you direction. All right, now if you look at this, it's coming from this way, going there. So it is a northwest wind. It's a northwest coming there from the northwest, going that way. It's a northwest wind. And if I work it out here, two longer lines, a shorter one, that is or half a line is 25 knots. So each long line represents uh, 10 knots. If you get a small line, not right at the top, little down, it is five knots. Okay. Then beside these symbols that will make you familiar with the rainfall itself, all right, and uh, the weather conditions rather, we need to know the top figure is your air temperature, the bottom figure is your uh, dew point temperature. In some of the maps you get this pressure, okay, 
that's shown here. But not always. In, if you look at our curriculum, we basically don't talk much about the air pressure on our weather symbols. But I thought I must tell you that it does exist. So sometimes when it's not only for exams, when you're looking at something and you see an additional figure, you find that's your pressure. Okay. Uh, this weather since last measurements. Uh, generally, in our synoptic maps that we assess, we don't ask about that. All right. But if you see something there, then that's the weather since the last measurements. Okay. That can pop up also in your uh, station model, your weather station model. This is what it's known as. Okay. So you've got that. Right. Uh, so please remember, but you don't, we don't generally, I know your teachers were taught you, they don't show you the pressure or they don't show you the weather since the last measurements. They show you the air temperature, the dew point, the current weather conditions, the wind speed and the wind direction. So let's focus on that. Right. If I look at this, the air temperature is 12 degrees Celsius. When you write an answer, make sure you have the units. 12, don't just write 12. Write a temperature, 12 degrees Celsius. Dew point temperature, 5 degrees Celsius. Current weather, it seems that we have a dot, which is rain, and we have a triangle, which is showers. Very confusing, a tool there. Okay, but the idea is to... Uh, look at what the symbol is there and associated with that. Right, so we've got that. Then wind direction will be, uh, it's a northeast wind. It's coming from the northeast. So it's a northeast wind. Wind speed, one long line and half a line, it means 15 knots. Okay, so you request to me, I've done it for you, a little piece showing you the wind speeds and direction and the air temperature and the uh, sort of uh, precipitation that may be occurring, the cloud cover, etc. But you've got these symbols, your teachers would have given to, to you, I think in grade 10, so you know them. All right, learners, uh, I hope it made a lot of sense on the subtropical anticyclones, etc. I wish you all the best. Goodbye.